I have to go back and cut out the first minute or so. I had no audio. Okay, so let's try again. I was doing some filming, and I am totally doing this impromptu, so forgive all of the moving around and doing stuff. Um, I just keep on keeping on. Yeah, the problem is that like minute-long lag that it's got. It's ridiculous. Um, hey, Christine. Hey, Charles. Hey, Brandon. Gerald. Puff. Uh, Gerald. Duh. Uh, Puffs and Drams. Dylan, nice. All right, so anyway, I was filming some stuff on the Spot Whiskeys tonight and figured I would just pop into a live and uh, finish off some of these drams and um, say hi to you guys. So I've got the green spot, yellow spot, red spot, and wondering what you guys are drinking tonight. Now, something that's interesting here is I, um, obviously these are all gonna be different. They're aged in different types of barrels for different lengths of time. But I was a little surprised earlier. I managed to mix up all three of these. Now they're all in exactly the same glass. So, and basically the same amount. Certainly didn't remember how much I had poured. So I was a little bit like scared that I wouldn't be able to tell them apart because <laughs> like they were straight up mixed up. I was like, crap, which one's which? And so I smelled them to see if I could figure out which one was which. And it was easy. It was very easy, actually. Not just because I filmed the episode a minute ago, but because you can tell the difference in the age of this whiskey just by the smell. Um, so puffs and drams, something I would very much suggest you do, unless you're keeping it closed for a reason, open up that yellow. It's so good. All right, so let's go ahead and just kind of drink this green. Um, I'll start here, because it's the bottom of the bottom of the list here. Now this is a 10 year old, Irish single pot single pot still Irish whiskey and man it's funny some of these descriptors are such a mouthful keeping it all straight it's like single pot still Irish whiskey thing yeah anyway so this is a single pot still Irish whiskey brought over as new make over to the spot uh, warehouse you want to call it it's actually basically just a basement underneath the streets of Dublin but they um they age all of this whiskey in X wine barrels and X bourbon barrels. So <sighs> anyway, so the, the nose on this, you guys are going to hear all about this this week. I almost wonder if this is not a great idea doing a stream like this. Um, I'm going to stick mostly to just kind of chatting with you guys and probably only aim to do this like as a 15, 20 minute long stream, just, just to hang out, get some extra content up there. I felt bad that I didn't put out a video. Yeah, Puffs and Dram, if you want to open it, now is a good time to do it because I'll be drinking along with you. Um, anyway, so I'll just talk about this. If people happen to catch the stream and then watch the video as well, then they get twice as much dick. <laughs> Suntory Toki, huh? Just moved to Boston. So, Bill, where is the best place to buy whiskey around here? There are a couple of them, Tyler. Now, when you say you moved to Boston, where, like, Boston proper? Or are you actually just, like, outside of Boston? Because that will, that will change my answer. Oh, uh, cheers, guys. Double a green spot. Nice. <laughs> Nose of Apple Jolly Ranchers. Interesting. I mean, you're, you're definitely right about green apple, um, for sure. Like, that's this is one of the classic, if you smell this and want to know what green apple smells like in a whiskey, this is a good example. One thing I love about this whiskey is that it's very sweet. And it kind of makes you salivate a bit when you try it, um, which isn't great if you're trying to talk about it. <laughs> Subtle dick jokes. Yep. Um, so Bourbon saying, hey, what's going on? Two times the dick for the win. <laughs> um, so Chris, I'm going to ignore the chat for the most part. Let me know if you're planning on leaving. Otherwise, I'll just let you kind of do the admin thing and, and show and hide people if necessary. I know Roy got kind of like spam botted last night, so I'm not nervous about that, but I'm conscious of it. Um, well, so the thing with the blue spot is it wouldn't be 20 year. It would probably be seven year unless they do something completely different. So the deal with the spots, just because we're on the topic. Ooh, Ardbeg Kelpie. Nice. Um, white H2O kayak or cool. I've tried whitewater kayaking. It was uh, a lot of work. <laughs> it's annoying that the thing doesn't just go straight, you know, like a normal kayak. <coughs> Excuse me. So <clears throat> what was I getting at? Oh yeah, the, the spots. So the blue, sp when when they would take these <clears throat> these barrels essentially back from Jameson, 
um, which I don't know if I mentioned that. That's where they were getting the new make from was Jameson. They would take it back to their to their storage underneath the streets of Dublin is what they said, but it's basically their basement. And they would mark them with these little paint splotches. That's why they look like that. And the different colors meant different ages that they were expecting to let that whiskey age. So the seven seven year is a blue spot, 10 year is a green spot, 12 year is a yellow, and 15 year is red. <clears throat> there are different things that they do before going into the barrels. And I'll actually, I'll just keep that one to myself. I want you guys to watch the video still. Um, but obviously when you have just a ton of barrels, you want to be able to easily identify them. And the colored spots are kind of a cool concept. I actually really like it. There's that part of my brain that wants to have, you know, all of a thing, like the whole collection that as soon as I got the red spot in the mail from a viewer, I ended up having to go out and buy the green and the yellow because it just had to happen. <laughs> mm. Very tasty. So I have a whole bunch of episodes written right now because I'm doing, for those of you that might not be aware, I'm doing all of March is Irish Whiskey Month. And I've pretty much always done that since uh, not quite when I started the channel because I actually started in March. Um, but probably from like the second year on, I've always done Irish whiskeys in March because it just makes sense. You got St. Patrick's Day and whatnot. So this year, I'm going out of my way to do a lot more episodes than I typically do. Hey, Michael. <laughs> What's going on? Um, so I'm going to do three episodes this first week of March and then two episodes every other week. So you tried the red spot so good it gave me a brown spot. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I... Um, I have to disagree. The the red spot is not my favorite. Where's the blue spot? I told you they don't they don't make it. Um, if they have started making it, I'm very much unaware of it. Uh, there is, however, a plan to make it, so that could be cool. Hmm. Still haven't seen the red here, unfortunately. Now Jason Coates, um, I'm assuming it's Coates, not Co Cody's, but either way. Um, Jason Coattails. Hey, Arthur. Let's see. First time on your stream. Your live camera looks great. Just dropping by to say hi. Heading to Balcones for single barrel picks tomorrow. Oh, I'm jealous, Arthur. That's going to be great. Um, thank you very much for the super chat, and I hope you have an awesome time at Balcones. It's going to be great. Okay, anyway, so as I was saying, um, the red is starting to show up in stores pretty consistently lately, and I think you'll have a much easier time finding it, Jason. Man, I'm, I'm a little jealous. ECBPC 19. Excellent, Kevin. I never tried any of the spots. Uh, yeah, trying to get my hands on the Brooklotti Classic Lottie based on your older live stream. Can't find it, but I won't give up. That's interesting, Michael, that you can't find it. That seems to be extremely easy to find around here. And I'm in Massachusetts. Massachusetts is like nowhere as far as whiskey distribution goes. Um, okay, like more than one coat. Excellent. You know, I've seen you for so long, Jason, that it's nice to finally know how to pronounce your last name. Hmm. Hey, Andrew. Jason Cody's. <laughs> Jason Coattails. I like that. I'm going to go Jason Coattails. We now have DJ Bacon and, and Jason Coattails. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just give a lot of the people. Uh, I, I need one for you, Christine, as well. Although I, I feel like I'm, I'm worried about making it rude. I feel like you could probably kick my butt. <laughs> ah, Teeling Single Grain. I've got a bottle of that back there, actually. You'll be seeing that on the channel this week, uh, this month. So. so let me tell you guys about what I'm doing this weekend, because I suspect that you might be a little jealous. <laughs> um, so this liquor store that I mentioned all the time, uh, Julio's, Whis Julio's Liquors, they have a once a year thing. You guys have seen me do th this on the channel before. They do a once a year thing called the Go Whiskey Weekend. And this year it's actually the Go Whiskey Week. Those of you that are in the Discord or follow me on Instagram will see that, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. So during the Go Whiskey Week, there are a number of whiskey related activities that are planned by um, Ryan, who's the, the owner of Julio's. And he's got some clout with all of pretty much every distillery. Like people just know Ryan. He's honestly, he's a cool guy too, but uh, the guy can tell a story. <laughs> anyway, um, sorry, I'm looking at the chat. He set up all of these different events and I went to the very first one of this year, which was a 
four course meal paired with different Canadian whiskeys that was, um, I guess you'd call led by Dr. Don Livermore. I think it's Livermore. Um, he is the master distiller at, um, oh my gosh, Hebram, he, he, Hiram Walker, Hiram Walker, Walker. I'm saying that. Am I saying that wrong? Hiram Walker? I feel like that is wrong. Canadian whiskey. <laughs> He's the master distiller at Canadian whiskey. Um, hey, folks, bring on the spots. Yeah, nice. Uh, let's see. So anyway, the four different courses were were awesome. The first one was, uh, it was some sort of, um, crap, whoops, wow. What was the first course? I don't remember. But the second course was really good too. It was a potato gnocchi with... Um, some sort of chicken thing. It was it was very very good, and then there was a habanero chicken, which was amazing, and then a chocolate creme, uh, chocolate crepe. Which did you try the sixty year old whiskey they sampled last year? No, it is Hiram Walker. I I told you I knew I was saying it wrong. Thank you very much. I, I yeah, <sighs> this is why notes are good. There's way too much like whiskey stuff up here. I can't keep it all straight. It's tough. Hiram, yes, thank you. Um, anyway, so we had all kinds of stuff. We had Lot 40 cask strength, which was pretty cool. We had an 18-year-old, 18-year-old, um, I, you know what? Let me grab the sheet real quick. Give me two seconds. I'm actually wearing pants this time. Ah, see, this is a lot better than trying to remember. Okay, so... Dr. Don Livermore, Master Blender at Hiram Walker Distillery. We did. Um, we started with a welcome cocktail of Lot 40 Rye Whiskey Sour, which was very, very good. It was served in an interesting glass. So I'm used to drinking a whiskey sour in like a rocks glass. It was uh, kind of like a tall, tall glass. Um, almost like, not like a champagne flute. But anyway, so then we had J.P. Weiser's 18-year-old, which was pretty tasty. Ah, uh, yes, the first course was a maple whiskey glazed pork belly, which... Awesome. Uh, paired with Gooder, Gooderim and, wart, and Warts. Then the second course was Duck Confit with um, Sweet Potato Gnocchi, Whiskey Cream Sauce, Onion Strings, blah, 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 blah with J.P. Weiser's 15-year-old. The third course was that grilled citrus um, chicken with a habanero uh, so puree with uh, J.P. Weiser's Triple Barrel Rye. And then chocolate crepe with brulee banana, whiskey whipped cream, and the whiskey that they paired it with was Pike Creek Rum Cask Finish. And then there was a special taste of Lot 40 Cask Strength. And that was really cool. It was a very cool event. And just doing a doing a tasting like that, if you have anything like that in your area, I mean, this was $65 a seat, and my wife actually came with me, which that was awesome because she doesn't really drink whiskey. So it was very cool to have her there. Um, going to something like that if you can make it happen do it because it is an event and you're going to be surrounded with people who are nerding out about whiskey near just as hard as you are all right anyway so getting back to what i was talking about this is a whole week of different stuff and they have um the like a blender from kayo uh that japanese whiskey came to kind of show you how they blend and they gave you like these little kits of all different stuff and they told you how to how to blend them in what proportions so that you could taste something it was They've got a whole bunch of cool stuff. So the thing that they're doing this weekend is, excuse me, it's called the the Grand Dram. And what it is in this case is I think it's about 75 to 80 different distilleries. And each one brought a number of expressions for a grand total of about 300 different whiskeys. And you can try them all. <laughs> you can basically try as many as you want. The thing is, it goes from one to four. So there is a certain time frame on it, um, and you can only drink as much as you can drink in three hours. That, for me, is a lot. <laughs> you guys have seen me drink quite a bit. But the thing is, it's my biggest networking day of the year. So I, I tend to meet a lot of uh, people, ambassadors or whatever, new people, and any new whiskey. So I, I get to try a lot of cool stuff that you guys end up seeing on the channel. So, anyway. Hmm. So the green spot's almost gone. I should just toss this back. <laughs> Bill, I just said I moved to the area and now you mentioned this. Yeah, Tyler, it's not too late. It's on Sunday. It's March, March 1st. So um, go to juliosliquors.com. You'll see all the information that you need there. And uh, Tyler, if you end up coming, by all means, I'll be wearing this shirt. Come find me. Say hi. Mm. So the green spot, 
it's good stuff. Now it is only 40% and it does feel a little bit thin, makes me wish it was a little higher uh, ABV, but most things do, so oh well. Let's move on along. I'm actually gonna save the yellow because I'll tell you right now it's my favorite and I'd rather drink it last. Um, oh good, I have some water. So let's go ahead and have some red. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna keep this stream down to probably about a half hour max. I don't wanna push it to an hour. I'm actually starting to think that that could be, that could be a good time frame for me. Cause doing Fridays is tough for an hour. Cause a lot of times I'll wake up on a Saturday morning feeling not so fresh. <laughs> and if I kept it to a half hour, I bet I could do a little bit better, but we'll see. So hopefully you all had a pretty good week at work this week and are recovering on your Friday night. Pronunciations are weird. You can see something a thousand times and never hear it. Yes, absolutely. Actually, there was a there was a person um, that I've told this. I, I read this one, one place, which is actually kind of ironic. You, you'll find out why. It basically said, never make fun of a person if they mispronounce a word. And the reason is because there's a good chance if they know that word, they probably read it instead of hearing it. And uh, I always try to keep that in mind when somebody says something weird. Now, if somebody says, like, I took it for gran granite, then, uh, you know, that's worth making fun of. But <laughs> this all came up because somebody mispronounced harbinger. They said harbinger. And uh, I was like, oh, did you know it's harbinger? And she was like, oh, I've only ever seen that in print. Anyway, all right, so going to the red. The red is a 15-year-old. It's 46%. And it is comprised of three, essentially whiskey that has been aged in three different types of barrels. The nose on this, glad your voice is sounding better this week. Yeah, man, I, I hate getting sick. I get sick a lot. And uh, it's interesting because I'm sure that the whiskey has something to do with it. I'm just generally unhealthy because of how much whiskey I drink. No, I really don't drink nearly as much as you would expect a person in my position to drink. <clears throat> except for on the live streams. <laughs> and now that I don't do Booker for Super Chats anymore, well, I never said I wouldn't, but now that I have not made that a consistent thing on the streams, that has helped. <clears throat> All right. So now the thing that I don't like about the red, and I, I'm curious if anybody in the chat is drinking the red along with me. Jeez, Christine, it's like you said. Hold on one second. It's like you said my voice was better and all of a sudden started getting gross. Anyway, so the thing that I don't love about the red is that it tastes kind of, it's it's heavy. It tastes like it's got some elements in it that you just don't really want to drink. Um, almost like, almost like dried, dried plums or figs or, you know, I'm going to go figs. Like, but not, it's not sweet. It's, it's. I'm trying to think of like prunes. <laughs> I think like prunes. Yeah. You know, I haven't seen prunes in the grocery store in a really long time. Um, anyway, so I, I'm not a huge fan of the red. In fact, I, I ultimately, I'll just tell you guys, I did not recommend that people buy this one. I thought, I think you should try it if you're at a, a bar and you see it. It's 130 bucks. I don't think this is worth $130, at least not to me. It's just a very different taste and not one that I personally enjoy. So that's part of it. People will definitely love this whiskey, but I am not one of them. So Charles, Red Breast will be one that you'll see on the channel as well. I have both Red Breast and the Red Breast Cask Strength, which I am psyched. I cannot wait to do that one. Now, one thing I saw was the Red Breast 15. They just started carrying that near me. And I don't recall really seeing that, unless they changed the packaging or something, because it, it didn't stick out to me before. They've always had the Red Breast and the Red Breast Lestau uh, edition, but I've just recently started seeing the cask strength and the 15 show up. So, so I have a question for you guys, because I got kind of, I got kind of, uh, what do you call it? Insulted, I guess. <laughs> um, people were telling me, I saw a Springbank 13, and I'm not sure if there's more than one Springbank 13, but it's a green bottle, and it was for $130. And people were telling me that I should be picking that up, like, immediately. Especially you, Christine. I know that you like Springbank. Do you, what do you guys think? Do you know which one I'm talking about? I, I don't have any more detail than that, but I could certainly figure it out if you want me to. Um, 
so they did just do a complete packaging rebrand now but the red breast the red breast like 12 that still looks pretty similar as far as the box goes yeah the 15 has been around okay that's good to know mr coattails hmm. now one thing i'm actually very excited about with that um the grand dram is what they call it uh thing this weekend is that i'm not going to film for the first time in a few years I always film and I just there's no sense in it because I've kind of showed it to you guys before um, the videos themselves don't do very well which is fine that doesn't really matter but it's inconvenient to carry a camera around there because it's something that extra to carry instead of just you know handing out business cards making conversation it's just kind of in the way now one thing that's cool is Mark Gillespie from um, the whiskey podcast there uh, he is probably going to be there. Whiskey cast. He's probably going to be there. He's usually there and it'll be fun to go see him. No way. Bill whiskey has got me well from a few colds. Yeah, well, that's fair. Um, I'm, I'm the opposite. <laughs> uh, so we got 45 in the, in the chat. That's pretty cool. I, um, I'm looking forward. I, I kind of took a break obviously from the doing the live streams, but I think I'm going to try to get back in doing them again. Um, anyway, so I'm going to finish off this red, and then I'm going to move on to the yellow. I think it's because it was a single cask bottling of Springbank. Dustin was recommending the purchase. Yeah, you, he wasn't the only one, though. I, um, as I was in the store, there were people that I was talking to that were telling me I should absolutely go buy the bottle, like, just without even seeing me look at it. They were like, oh, did you see the 13 over there? And I'm like, okay, maybe this is one worth picking up. But you guys, I've talked about before, like, buying whiskey for the channel is different than buying whiskey for myself. Someday, someday when I'm done with the channel, which won't be anytime soon, um, I'll probably purchase much different styles of whiskey. Or I'll move on to like rum or something completely different, never drink whiskey again. I don't know. Depends on what the situation is that makes me stop the channel. Mm. Yeah, the red, not doing it for me. Yeah, you'd have picked it up. Mm. all right so i am really hoping they come out with the blue spot at some point because it'd be fun to revisit this whole line i'm sure that i'll have these bottles for quite a while uh maybe not the yellow <laughs> the uh the delay here is killing me so yeah never mind i, I think it's about a 30 second delay it makes it very hard to have a conversation but YouTube's got to improve that. I mean, I get 30 seconds to do all of that is is not terrible, but it's YouTube. They could probably figure something out. Ah, oh, man, I love this yellow. It's actually one of my favorite whiskeys. It's, it's definitely my, uh, well, should I say it's? Off the top of my head, it is my favorite Irish whiskey. Now, I have a whole lot of really good Irish whiskeys to have this this month. So we'll see what it looks like by the end. I mean, that red breast cask strength, I have a feeling is going to be awesome. Um, if it's not, then I'm, I'll be sad to see that. But uh, this yellow spot is fantastic. So this is a 12 year and it does end up spending, it's it's aged very similar to the way that they age Irish, uh, sorry, Canadian whiskey, where with Canadian whiskey, you make, all of the different parts by themselves. So like you'll do a mash of wheat, for example, or barley or whatever else, you know, corn. You'll do your one mash of corn and then your one mash of something else. And then at the end, you marry them together for like six weeks or so. But in this case, they age three different, they age the same whiskey in three different styles of barrel for 12 years. And at the end, they just mush them together <laughs> and then pour it in the bottles and uh it's very interesting I, I actually really liked that about the spot whiskeys is that all three of these are made very differently um i do i like cognac and brandy i do not have a whole lot of experience with either one uh one of my viewers did buy me they bought me a brandy i think they sent me a gift card to total wine and just said hey this is what i want you to buy with it and uh, it was good. It was it was a brandy, I believe, that was aged in 
or finished in a bourbon barrel or something like that. Somehow it had a connotation to whiskey, and uh, it was it was pretty good stuff. Hmm. Okay. Well, so Spencer, it's been about a year. <laughs> Time to jump back in. Ex bourbon, ex sherry, and ex Malaga, uh, Malaga. Sorry, wine with the yellow spot. Shh, Donald, don't give it away. That's what the episode's about this week. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, since he already said so, the the Malaga wine is is a type of Spanish wine, and it's um, very sweet. It's fruity, uh, so it kind of really lends itself well to the yellow spot. Doesn't really crush any of the the light fruity crispness that you get in Irish pot still whiskey. Hmm. You know, I'm noticing something different as well. In this particular live stream, I'm not exhausted. <laughs> I'm usually exhausted. And I think that has a lot to do with it. I'm having a, a lot more fun than I typically, uh, well, not, not to, I always have fun on a live stream, especially when I have other guests on. But these, these single person live streams, uh, sometimes they can drag. This is, a, I'm having a really good time though. Wave didn't know you were going live tonight. No, nobody knew I was going live tonight, Craig, because I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> I had no idea. I was doing, um, I was just filming episodes on all three of these, and then I had it some left over in my Glen Cairns, and I figured I would do a stream and, and you know, come say hi to you guys and do this whole thing. So I'm going to finish up this yellow in a couple of minutes here, and then I'll be off. I'm just, there's no sense in going for an hour. There's no sense in going for whatever. Actually, it's already been almost a half hour. So. Hey. <laughs> DH Silv. Nope, you made the typo, so your 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 uh, your jackass remark doesn't count. So the average price of the yellow spot probably a little over a hundred dollars. I paid one oh seven for this, um, and that was probably a little bit expensive. But I would guess you could probably get it for a, I think between ninety and one ten, depending on where you go. Well, the red one stops, the green one can go, the yellow one use caution. No, yellow means go faster. That's what yellow means. Um, you've been spotted. I just got home with a bottle of Jameson Caskmates Bose Irish Red uh, Ale Barrel. I think it's a limited edition available in Ontario, Canada. Haven't tried it yet, but maybe by the end of this. Yeah, Kimo Maki. Cool. Um, so here's a question for you guys. I already have all of my Irish whiskeys picked out for this this month. What would you guys hope that I would review? Like if if you don't worry about if I've reviewed it yet, but like what Irish whiskeys are you personally curious about? Is there anything you've ever looked at and just been like, I don't know if that's okay or not? I'm gonna sit here and sniff this whiskey. Give it a little sniffy. A little snifferoo. Hmm. I am so excited for uh, 13 Green. Oh, I'm so excited for this thing on Sunday. It's so much fun. They always have these really good like caterers there too, giving away free free food. And the event is only $10. It's $10. It used to be free, actually. But then um, too many people, like, so the, the deal, ugh, Jameson Cold Brew. Man, Travis, urgh. All right, so here's a question for the for the group here. I have avoided doing any sort of flavored whiskeys on this channel since the inception of the channel. I always think it was more of like a personal choice that I wanted to, certainly at the beginning, I wanted to seem more, professional is the wrong word, focused on whiskey. And, you know, flavored whiskey isn't actually whiskey, technically. Um, so I've always avoided it. But do you guys care? Like, would you want me to do flavored whiskeys every now and then? It would be very rare, but it would be an every now and then thing. Like, for example, I didn't do that Crown Royal Peach that everybody was talking about. Probably missed out on some some views and some subscribers because of that. Um, but I do kind of feel like I want to do this Jameson Cold Brew. A lot of people have talked about it. So Teeling, Screwball. Yeah, I mean, Screwball's up there. My wife actually told me she wanted me to buy Screwball. Powers John Lane, 12 year. Middleton, Middleton, Middleton. West Cork. Okay, actually. So the funny thing is, you guys could legitimately probably n name every single Irish whiskey because there's so few of them. Turconnell. I've only done one Turconnell on the channel. I had a Turconnell 16-year sherry cask, which was amazing. That was very good. I actually tried to find that for this for this uh, month. Problem is, it's super limited, and 
they've already stopped making it. So everything that's made is out there. Kilbegan. Okay, good. I'll be doing a Kilbegan. Good evening, everyone. Oak and Smoke. Hey, what's going on, buddy? I never want someone to spend money on a flavored whiskey. <laughs> never tried an Irish. I'm normally a bourbon man. What do you recommend I try first? Well, honestly, pal Joey, I mean, try Jameson. Just regular Jameson. It is as big of a name as it is for a reason. It's it's a little bit harsh um, compared to some of the other things that you could drink, but it's popular for a reason. If you don't like Jameson, I have other suggestions for you, but, you know, give it a shot. Black Velvet. <laughs> Zero interest in flavored stuff, but it won't offend me if you cover it. I hope most people would say the same. Yeah, that's fair. You should review what you're excited to review. Also fair. I'm totally down. You're doing some cool flavored whiskey like cold brew, screwball, etc. Okay. That's actually really encouraging to hear, guys, because I've always assumed that if I covered a, a flavored whiskey on this channel, that I'd get a bit of a rebellion on my hands. You know, people kind of downvote, downvote, thumbs down. But, yeah, who cares? You know, you guys are right. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll test out the Jameson cold brew and see what I... See what that gets me. So I did end up telling the, my patrons which which whiskeys I'm going to be covering. In, <laughs> boy, you know it's getting late and I've had a couple when I can't think of the word whiskey on a live stream about whiskey. Um, I told them about which whiskeys I'll be covering. So just for the heck of it, since it's been a few days. Oh, you want to hear my thoughts on the green spot? Okay. Um, I'll get back to that in just a minute. I kind of already went over that towards the beginning of this stream, but I'll, I'll go over it again real quick. Um, anyway, so with the with the stuff I'm going to review this this month. So I'm doing the, the green, yellow, red the first week of March. The second week of March is Kilbegan, um, single, single grain. And then um, something. Oh, uh, Connemara, uh, the peated Irish whiskey. And then the third week will be um, red breast 12 and the red breast 12 cast strength fourth week is that one I'm actually going to keep a secret because um, I think it's going to be cool uh, and then the one on Sunday is a secret and then the one later in the week is what is it it's oh tealing uh, tealing's small batch possibly more um, we'll see what I do with the, with the tealing and then the last week will be something else Oh, uh, Bushmills 10. Uh, just got a bottle of that in the mail today. So that'll be fun. I think that's what I'll probably be covering this this month. Um, maybe I'll pick up that Jameson cold brew and cover that. I think it'd be cool. Stay away from Jim Bean vanilla, though. Thumbs down is still in get. Yeah, you're not wrong, Jason Coattails. I think I don't have to call you Jason Coattails. I think I just have to call you Coattails. Yeah, I think that'll work. I'll try that out next time. Um, so for those of you that are interested and maybe came a little late, let's talk about the way that these kind of play out here, right? So the, the green spot, if somebody could give me a quick price check, I forgot this in the video itself as well. What is kind of an average price for the, the green spot? I don't remember what I paid for it the other day. I think I paid like 70 maybe, maybe, maybe 71 or maybe it was like 60. I genuinely don't know, but if anybody has an idea, just throw it in the chat. So the green spot is definitely the cheapest of the three by far. And it's it's like a green apple. It's like drinking a green apple, and especially on the nose. The nose and the taste match each other very, very well though. Um, the I'm gonna go over to the red spot. This is the most expensive. This is $130 roughly. And it is, in my opinion, not worth the money. It's heavier than it should be. It's got a little bit of like a sulfide kind of like, as I say sulfide, geez. It's like a sulfury, heavy elements kind of thing. Um, <laughs> Jameson cold brew for my, that's funny, Spencer. I like that. That's good. It's 50 to 70. Okay. That makes sense. Um, anyway, this, this one's not worth the money for me, but I do recommend that you try this in a bar if you see it, because I suspect this is going to be one of those diverging um, opinion kind of whiskeys. Like some people are going to really like this. Me personally, I don't really like this. Um, it's not bad though. And then yellow spot is fantastic in every way, shape, and form. So that's that's my opinion about these guys. 
Wow, 55 in Texas for that, huh? That's pretty good. Hmm. Well, it's funny. I feel like we're just getting going, but I also don't want to push this any further than I should. I actually, uh, I'm still feeling pretty good. I might film another episode. I have an episode on Lefroy 10 all written. Maybe I'll finish my night off with a Lefroy. So that way I can uh, burp in my sleep and make my wife want to leave the bed. <laughs> anyway, well, I appreciate you guys all popping in. I know it was a random impromptu kind of thing. Um, for the next few weeks, I'm going to attempt to do a video, I mean, a live stream on Friday nights. I'll try to give you guys a little bit more of a notice, but I also don't necessarily want to be covering exactly what I just filmed either. So I don't know. I'll have to figure something out. Go back to the red after it opens up. Uh, well, so this has actually been yellow spot cask strength. No way. They're both the same ABV, 46%. I'm not sure what yellow spot cask strength would taste like. I don't know that I'd like it, honestly. I mean, I, I love cask strength, but like Irish whiskey and cask strength for the most part don't really they don't sound like they go together as much to me um cast cast strength tends to be like you know and irish whiskey tends to be like ah. <laughs> anyway all right well thank you guys all for joining me here tonight this has been fun and i'll see you in a lot of videos over the next month so have a great rest of your night cheers i missed it